Do you ever see all those fancy fonts with all the swirly letters and wonder where people are getting them from? Some of these fonts are so cool and have so many different swirls and loops and they make the fonts look so fancy and especially around the holidays. But do you ask people what the font name is and where they maybe get it? And sure, they'll be happy to tell you that, but sometimes they neglect to tell you where to actually find all the loopy parts to the font. Because once you upload a font, you will just have the basic letters for that font and you actually have to go searching to find all the extra pieces, which are called glyphs. So today we are gonna walk through how to find and download fonts, how to upload it onto your computer, and then get it into your Cricut Design Space. And from there, we will show you where to go to find all these glyphs so that you too can achieve all the fancy writing and crafting that you want. Hey, I'm Sarah. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming tutorials. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Make sure you all stay to the end so that you don't miss any of the important steps that we walk through throughout this whole tutorial. Now let's get at it. My favorite place to get fonts from is Creative Fabrica. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this website or not, but they have so many different fonts and graphics that it is hands down my favorite place to go to look when I need something that I'm trying to work on. I actually prefer to use this as my subscription over Cricut Access because with Cricut Access, you can't really move your projects out of Cricut Design Space to a different program if you wanna work on it somewhere else. So I like to work a lot in Canva and then I'll move things over to Cricut Design Space. Now, that's just what I prefer. Obviously, do what you wanna do and this is just one option of places where you can get graphics and fonts, but this is the one that I tend to go to and like the most. So what we're gonna do here is actually come down and I'm just gonna grab a font. I'm gonna grab this Christmas font this handwritten font. So what we wanna do first is go down and see if they have any glyphs. So here it says view all glyphs. We are going to look and see what they have. So some will have more than others. And down here are a few extras. They don't have a lot of options outside of what the normal font would be. Um, so this is probably not one I would choose. So we are gonna go back out and I'm actually going to search up the Samantha Upright. I'm gonna click on that one. Now there are several different ones in here, but this is the one I like to use for a lot of like my Christmas writings and like if I'm making ornaments, things like that. This one has so many glyphs and I'll show you that in a minute here. But this is the Samantha Upright script font and I am not sure, I already have this one and because I have the subscription, it's not actually going to show me how much this particular font would cost if you did not have a subscription. But I wanna say this one's actually pretty pricey. I wanna say when I looked at it last time, it was close to $50. That's ridiculous, but once you see what it all has to offer, you will understand why. But here's why also I decided to get the yearly subscription because then you get as many downloads as you want and it's all included. So for, I think it was $5 a month when I signed up. I'm not sure what it is right now. I'll leave a link down below so you can go look at that, but it is totally worth it, especially when you think about all the cool fonts and graphics that you can upload while you have your subscription. Um, but let's go down here and hit view all glyphs. We are going to scroll down. So now when you type in, and I'll show you this later, the Samantha Upright font in Cricut Design Space, like when you open up a text box and you just type it in, this is what you will see. These letters here, so the uppercase and lowercase. And you might think, well, that's not very 
fancy. I mean, it's nice, but that's not the swirly letters that I saw and was looking for. So then what we need to do is go find the glyphs. And here are some of the examples of all the different glyphs. So here are some of the A's. As you can see, they're kind of broken up here a little bit. But all of this... Look how many different styles of uppercase A they have. I mean, you guys, I'm telling you, it could take you days just to sort through which ones you want to use for whatever project you're working on. Now, some of the letters don't have as many options, like the B's and the C's, definitely. They could add a few more, but they have so many different ones to pick from and they even have lowercase. So as I just quickly scroll down here, so you can see again, the A's have a lot of options because a lot of words begin and end in A's. So they have a lot of different styles that you can use. The B's are really cool, the lowercase B's, but I think you get the picture. Okay, so this is what you would do um, to find if a font that you like has extra glyphs, you have to open it up and search down for where it says view all glyphs and click on that and just scroll your way through and see if it has what you want. It also has this bonus here, which I think I just put that to my downloads. I will have to open that later and see what that all is because I'm not sure if I opened that up before. But what you would do now is you would hit the download button and Actually, for purpose of this video, I think I am just gonna download some other random font. Here, we'll do this one. I'm pretty sure this one will not have any glyphs, but that's okay. I'm just showing you how you would go about downloading this to your computer. And again, I'm on a Mac. If you have a PC, I think it is a little bit different, but we are gonna go with this minimalist. And I'm gonna hit download. And there it went up here. And then I am going to double click this to open it. And here you can see it came into my download folder and it already unzipped when I clicked up in my downloads at the top. So this is what you might get is the zipped file. You do not need to keep this zipped file once it's open. So you can go and put that in your trash and that is totally fine. But here, as you can see here, I did not unzip the extra pieces to this Samantha bonus thing. Okay, so now I just unzipped it. So you can see those two files are right here. And here are the extra pieces. So here's the minimalist. I'm gonna double click on that. It's gonna bring up this preview window that shows you the fonts or the font style, the letters. This is what you're downloading. So now we are going to hit install. Now sometimes the files will have multiple options like the OTF or the TTF. When given the option, always choose the OTF, the open type font, because that will just give you better results overall. Now that that is all downloaded onto the computer, what we have to do next is close out of Cricut Design Space. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here and hit my little X, I'm gonna hit quit. And on my computer, for some reason, I don't know if it's just mine, if it's like some weird glitch, but it never fully closes out. So then I go up to my little Apple, I hit force quit, and then my Cricut Design Space, force quit. Yes, I wanna force quit. And then now it is completely gone there. As you can see down here, there's no little dot under it. So that means it's completely closed out. You need to close this out completely for the new fonts to actually upload into your Cricut Design Space. So now we will open this up again. We are gonna start a new project. And here we have a new blank canvas. Let's grab a text box. And I'm going to type in the word, let's do Mary. Because it is fall and I'm starting to think about Christmas stuff, so why not? Okay, so now here is Mary. We're gonna come up here to the font section and click the drop down. Now, the different options here, the Cricut is for all the Cricut fonts. So if you have Cricut access, you will have 
all of these fonts in here unless it's like a copyrighted font like a Disney font or something like that. The system font is the one where everything you upload is going to be in your system font. And then as you can see over here, as with the Cricut ones, they have these little bookmark spots that you can click and then it will show up here in your bookmark. Here is my Samantha Upright font. Now I'm gonna go back over here and search minimalist and see if that one is in here. Yep, here it is. Okay, so that's the one that I just downloaded and unzipped and installed. And now because we closed out Cricut Design Space completely, it is right here. But we are gonna go back over here. We are going to go ahead and pick this. Here is our Samantha Upright font. And like I said, it has just the basic letters. There's no fancy swirls or anything in here. So now we are gonna go fix that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head down to our bottom panel and hit this gray box. It's a book with letter A's on it. That's your font book. So in your font book, you will see all the fonts that you have on your computer. Some of them were just on the computer. Some are ones that you uploaded. I do not think I uploaded 500 fonts, but you can also go to my fonts and see now I'm down to 186. So better option for sifting through all your fonts. If you know you had one that you liked, but you couldn't remember what it was, go down to my fonts instead of all fonts. It'll narrow your search. But because I know which one I'm looking for, I'm going to again, Type in Samantha Upright, and here it pops up. I'm going to click on that, wait for it to pop up. Okay, here it is. So now here again are those basic letters that I told you and showed you on the Creative Fabrica site that we have. And now we're gonna start sifting down through all of these glyphs. I mean, there are so many rows of A's. They even have like the cursive A, which is pretty cool. I'm going to come up to the top here and enlarge this so you can actually see the letters better because a lot of them have these little dots and dashes on the top for different languages. And we are going to avoid those because we don't need that for today. And I am going to come over here and grab this slider all the way down to the M because that's what we're looking for. You will need to upload this and sort through all of them yourself to go check them all out. But for now, we are looking at the M's. So we have, here's the basic one, and then it has all the different variations that you could want for the M. There are not as many M's as A's, which is good because then that might take me a really long time to figure out what I want. And I think for today, I'm going to use this one right here. So what you need to do is just click on this. And when this little box pops up, you're going to hit copy. Okay, this is like a copy and paste thing. Now we're gonna come back down here and hit Cricut. We're gonna double click on our text and then single click it so you get your cursor here and then click it and drag it to highlight it. And then on your Mac, like I said, this is on the Mac, you're gonna hit Command V to paste it. Okay, so like I said, copy and paste and now you have your M. That was super easy. Once you know what you're doing, you can do this with almost any font that has glyphs. You just have to make sure the one you are using has glyphs. Now we're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna come down here to the font book, click on it, and where's my slider? I'm gonna go all the way down. All right and our Y's. Now, depending on what other words you might be matching up and pairing together might determine which way you want your swirls to go and your loops, if you want it to like loop down and around this way, or if you want more of the loops to go this way. So sometimes you just need to play around with it. Oftentimes I will have two or three duplicates of my word just so that I can play around with the placement to see which one I like the best. And I think I'm gonna go super fancy with this one just because why not? And I'm going to again hit copy and come back down to my panel, open up Cricut, double click this so that it highlights it 
click it one more time, and then click and hold and drag it to highlight just the Y, and then I'm going to hit Command V. And there it changed it. Now if I was gonna have the word Christmas underneath here, I wouldn't do this crazy swirly Y here because that would cut right through the word. I would probably have it maybe come up and around a little bit more, but you get the picture. This is just to show you how to do this. Now there is another way that you can do this if all of that like highlighting and clicking and all of that seems a little confusing because this is all just one. You can come up here to advance and hit ungroup letters, okay? Now click off of it and then click one letter and you can move it. That way when you want to change out the letter, it's a little bit easier just to double click it and highlight it and not have to worry about all the other ones kind of right there. But you can go ahead and connect that again, line that up. Now, once you do have your word the way that you want it, you're gonna highlight the whole thing because we did separate that. So make sure you get all of it in one. And what you need to do is come down to the bottom corner here and you're gonna hit combine, okay? Now, in the days of old, we would hit weld and then we know we better hope we don't have to change it because once you weld something, if you move on, you can't go back and undo that. It is stuck that way forever. So in the past, I always had to make duplicates just in case I needed to not have it welded anymore if I had to make a change. But now we have this lovely button here that says Unite, and it does everything that weld does, only you can undo it at any time. So you could add a lot to this, you could change it, um, or not change it, but add other things to it. And then if you decided you maybe don't want all these swirls, you can go ahead and ununite it. You would just come back here and then do undo unite, okay? And then you have all your separate pieces that you can change out again. But you do want it united so that when you cut this out, it doesn't cut every single thing separately. If you've done that mistake before that's you know when you cut it out of vinyl it has all extra little pieces. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger here to show you what that means. So if you look here see where there's no line here where the E would be connected here or the R it's not separate letters it's like one cut. Well if we come back down here and hit undo unite now you can see, let me enlarge this a little bit, you can see all these cut lines, okay? Your Cricut will cut all of these little lines, which makes it very difficult when you are weeding, and it doesn't really look the best on your project. So always go and unite that so you don't have all those extra little cuts. We're going to come back here, so then we're going to just come back over here and hit unite. And that is all you need to know for how to find the glyphs and all those fancy swirly things with the fonts that maybe you've had a difficult time trying to figure out. I know it took me a while to figure it out when I first realized that these fonts had all these different options. So just go back over to Creative Fabrica and have fun looking through different fonts and see what different glyphs they all have. And make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the next tutorials. And let me know in the comments if you've tried to find the glyphs before and you just haven't been able to figure it out and if this is something that you find super helpful.